Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome back to my channel. I'm back with a video on GNU Radio. And this is going to be another video on GNU Radio tutorials. And we're going to look at jamming with respect to GNU Radio. So I've made a couple of videos on jamming where I used uh, different SDR platforms to actually do jamming and to show you how to actually physically jam a signal. But actually, I want to show you the simulation of how does a jamming signal looks like. And for that purpose, I'm using GNU Radio Companion, uh, one of the favorite. Uh, I like this particular software. So the idea of jamming, the basic idea of jamming is, let's say if you have a transmission at some frequency, let's say 100 megahertz, you would send a noise signal exactly at the same frequency. So what will what it will do, the noise signal will actually jam the original signal. It will cause an interference to that signal. And basically, that's what that jamming is all about. So how you actually do it, uh, so I brew up a simple flow graph in GNU Radio Companion. So if you were to look at it closely, I'm going to walk you through this graph. Uh, now, if you were to look at this, uh, once you open up a graph, you have a signal source, which is a cold signal. Uh, also, you need to have a throttle block. I'm working in real signals. So you have a throttle block. That is, you need to have a throttle block if you don't have physical hardware connected to your flow graph. It's going into an NBFM transmit. So what NBFM transmit is, so basically I am taking that signal, which is a cold signal, and I'm modulating using frequency modulation. Why am I using frequency modulation? Because in frequency modulation, you will get a lot of signals. You will get like FC plus FMs and FC plus 2 FMs, 3 FMs, and so on. So I would have a wider signal. That's about it. The Everything else is exactly the same thing. <clears throat> I haven't changed anything yet. Uh, the only thing that has changed is here. I'm using an interpolation factor, which is being called using this variable, which I'm calling it an inter interpolation, which is 10. So what's happening here in quadrature rate, you have interpolation, which is 10, is being multiplied by your SAMP rate. So it is 320 kilo samples now. So that's why in this graph, you are, you, you are seeing 320 kilohertz. What you need to understand regarding GNU Radio Flow Graph, you need to check the sample rate after every single block. So right now, the entering sample rate that is coming in from that signal source to here to that NBFM transmit block, which is actually acting as a narrowband frequency modulator transmitter, is actually 32 kilohertz. From that, the coming out sample is going to be around 320 kilohertz. To 20 kilo samples so I am actually visualizing this signal using a time sync all right then I'm also using something called an FFT filter I'll show you how to bypass a couple of blocks if you have a couple of blocks in your flow graph and you want to bypass them so this is basically a bypass graph I'll show you the output with bypass and without bypass that's why it's in yellow so it's going into an FFT filter and this FFT filter has a tap, which I'm calling it a transmitting tra taps. This is just is being used by this low pass filter tap. It is nothing but a low pass where you can set up your filter. So you can just get a filter from here, which is called an FFT filter uh, from, from here. So if you type in FFT filter, and then you can choose this filter to be a low pass filter, high pass filter by using these tabs. So this is at the transmitting side. That's why I'm calling it a tap. So it's just a low pass filter where I have a sample rate of sample rate multiplied by interpolation, which means the coming out sample is 320 and going inside of it is also giving out 320 kilo samples. We have a cutoff frequency at 20 kilohertz, and then we also have a transition bandwidth of 10 kilohertz. This is what I have set for this filter. So I want to see this only these frequencies. If I don't have this filter operating, I'll show you the output of that. If I have this filter outputting, uh, if working, it's not being bypassed, you will see the output of that using a time sync. Now, the next thing is, so basically what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to generate a transmitted signal. Then I am also transmitting a noise signal to show you the effect of jamming. Now, the output of this FFT filter is being added into with this add block. Now. In this add block, I have a simulated noise floor, which is nothing but a Gaussian noise floor. You will find it 
on this on this place this so this is where you'll find that noise source now this noise source is also being added with a FFT filter which I am calling it a jammer filter or jammer taps and this taps are being called using a low pass filter that has a cutoff frequency of 30 kilohertz and a transition bandwidth of 10 kilohertz so everything is being added so this is simulating my noise floor this is simulating my jamming and everything and also I also have another GUI slider that I'm using at this side which I am calling an amplitude to be J power which is depicting the power of my jamming signal that is going into that FFT filter and the tabs with these are here um, so this is where I'm using a range slider where I have a default value of 0 and it's going into an increment of 0.1 and going all the way up to 10 so let's see the effect of this without this FFT filter and without that output filter so once I play this flow graph now now if you were to look at it uh, as we would expect I would see uh, your signal your main signal plus these are other signal which are going to be a combination of FC plus FM and 2 FM and 3 FMs and things like that this is without that filter being active because by having this so you can just right click on any block so right click on it and you can press bypass so this thing is already being bypassed that's why it's in yellow so what what's happening now that even though this flow this this block is there you're just getting that signal it's bypassing this and it's taking the output as is so having that said so since it's a narrow band FM you would expect to see a main lobe plus you will see those side lobes and now when you look at it you also because we, I'm also looking at it in time sync as well so you're seeing this main in uh, you know, a waterfall graph as well so this is your waterfall graph which is here and then this is your time sync signal which is here as well uh, so now when I use when I bypass this let me close this and let me just right click on it or you can just click on it and press E that will enable this block now what will happen when I press play now look at the spectrum of this because I'm also seeing the, so now you're not seeing any of that you're just actually seeing your signal so by having a transmitting filter having a low pass filter it's actually pa passing only smaller frequencies and it's actually rejecting anything that is so what's what's happening anything above than 20 kilohertz you will not see anything less than 20 kilohertz that's what you're seeing at zero all right so at zero this is the frequency that you are seeing right now and on waterfall graph it also reflects that and same thing on this as well uh, but it doesn't matter at uh, at time sync because you also have complex signal and real signal everything is merged up so now having this signal now when I start increasing jamming power you will start seeing the effect here on on a signal in a spectrum and also in waterfall graph so I'm just increasing the jamming power as you can see that will start distorting my signal you will start seeing noises you were seeing pure signal before jamming because my jamming power was zero now you start seeing that signal that start jamming the frequency now as you start increasing the power of this jammer signal which I am trying to do this will try to actually diminish that signal now you're not seeing your signal anymore you're not seeing your actual signal anymore now your signal has been jammed so this is what jamming is all about you're trying to send noise to exactly the same frequency which actually high power jamming signal which will start jamming or which will start causing interferences in your signal now the next step is let's just try to bypass this so right click on it bypass this and let me play this of course as we expect to see a lot of these a lot of these and this is where the main signal is which is an actually darker red now when I start let me just actually uh, let this go all the way up here and then I'll start jamming my signal so this is what my actual signal is so we can see that how 
by increasing the power, it's actually going to take over the um, uh, adjacent bands or adjacent channels as well. So let's see the effect of this. So when I start jamming, I don't see that signal anymore. And it should start affecting the adjacent channels as well. As you can see, you, you, you're not clearly seeing this, but using in a waterfall graph that you would see this was my main channel and start affecting the adjacent channels, which are to the right and the left of my actual transmitted signal. So basically, that's the, that's the idea behind jammers. Uh, this is how that simple is. The concept of jamming is that simple. So I hope you like this small tutorial using GNU radio signal, how you actually implement jams, jammer and how you can actually visualize the, the concept of jamming using GNU Radio Companion. So if you have any questions, uh, leave it in the comment section. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, and thanks for watching.